Shambi na banga panja banga kandini, baga choba avi, bachoba buye pakati. So, banal presentations or speakers from each program. Apoka Public Works Program One, Program Two, Program Three. Then, it discussions or you can note as they speak things you want to address or questions that you have or comments that you have. Then, after they've all spoken um, in the re respective programs, then we can have the discussion and the questions or comments. That's when we'll be taking hands. Then after that, so Nickel or two, Mr. Mzananda, or Mr. Mzananda will outline and give us ba le breakaways is or uses or banayo, you break away and only what are the commissions that are needed for quiz or breakaways. So so Kubanjalo, Okangu, Kukutwe, so Kalango program two, so Nickel or Kuwa, Mr. Grinch. The two new were put in up. I like to program program ya buildings we often have an annual budget of give or take 1.6 billion annually as minus bana excuse me um, this budget comes from mostly our two big client departments which is health and education. I think it has more than 500 million. Education has 480 million, give, about there, give or take, round about there. So combined, <coughs> those two programs account for more than a billion of the infrastructure delivery that we have. 
Uh, we've got Public Works, which has more than 200 million of a budget. Then we've got small departmental programs such as DESREC, uh, social development, uh, and the like. Those are your, we call those other departments. So I think I'll need you guys to take notes and then get opportunities because I, 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 have, I haven't, I'm not, I'm not flighting anything. Um, <clears throat> the unit is then, in the new structure, we've got three chief directorates. Uh, one which will be dealing with other departments, one will be dealing with um, education, and one will be dealing with health. Across the directorates, we've got three tiers of um, sectors or programs that we have. You've got your professional unit, you've got your technical services unit, and you've got your in-house unit. I'll first speak about the professional services unit. Ne? Um, <clears throat> within professional services, there are great strides that we've done as a department. Because remember, we have a bursary program that is supported by uh, Mr. Tingwa, Pakwa HRD. Most of you that are sitting here, uh, I can count from my hand, Abandu and Babonayo, that. Um, that have benefited from the bursary program. So most of you are beneficiaries of that program. <clears throat> from Varsity, there's a skills pipeline uh, developmental program that we have. It first started with quantity surveyors. We realized that we've got a huge problem of project managers, and then the focus was on project management. We've got a number of project managers now that are getting registered. And the next gap that we can see is your engineering sector. Uh, I'll touch on properties a little, but and as Gakuluku properties, but I'll touch on it a little. So I think that program is 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 well crafted and running. I think the biggest gap that we currently have is that we have an influx of graduates that we're recycling year, year in, year out, and we felt that there's no middle management that is ensuring that these guys get the proper training and development that they require, so that if we then continue with the rotation, we know that when graduates come, they, they, they are welcomed by production quantity surveyors or production project managers or production engineers that will then train them effectively and uh, they can find the world as their oyster after their uh, contract is over, or if there's a opening, then they can apply for the opening and be appointed within the department. Also, one of our tasks uh, within the professional sector is to ensure that we become a key driver within the province. So what we do in most of our tenders that are going out, we allow for the appointment of graduates in the built environment sector. So it will be your QSs, engineers, electrical, mechanical, and the like. So there is that program that is there so that if we cannot employ you, any contractor that we employ can employ you for the duration of that construction project and you can benefit. You can benefit out of that. Um, what we've done recently with the professional services, which is PSPs, We've seen that over the years, the PSP companies are not growing. I think Masando was saying that he was in a firm, Kwapelum Sebenz. The reason for that is that <coughs> these companies were coming in at very low discounts, and it was not sustainable for them to actually appoint more people, grow their companies, and ensure that uh, there's, there's, there's that proper expansion and training and delivery happening within the professional sector alone. So we've scrapped a discount for the PSPs. We want them to go on full fees. We want them to, to compete on uh, disbursements, which is your traveling and subsistence. So I think what this will do, it will then change the narrative or how the industry is operating. 
because as much as we want to do projects inside, we still have a duty to ensure that the economy thrives outside of government. And if, we, if we're talking about a 1.6 billion annual projects that we need to do, there's no way with the capacity that we have, or even with an increased capacity, we can be able to respond to all those projects internally within public works. So we've always said that we need to strike some level of a ratio, whether it's a 30-70, we keep 30% of the work, we do it internally, 70% goes out to, to, to outside professionals, so that at least there's that continued development there as well. We've seen with the number of African companies that have been around for more than 10 to 15 years, the guys have not been able to grow within the sector, simply because they cannot partner, it's, it's, it's useless to partner because the margins which you are tendering with are just so low that you cannot have people that are coming in as, as fellow professionals coming in partnering with you and you share in whatever profit margin that that company is making. So we've looked at those issues that are there in industry and felt let us intervene to make sure that at least industry in the Eastern Cape is able to flourish from a professional sector point of view. So I think uh, when it comes to professional services, that's about that. We have partnered with uh, CBE, <coughs> the Council for the Built Environment. Uh, they are one of our strategic partners and from time to time, they assist us with some of the mentors that we need in certain disciplines so that we are able to then continue the, 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 the development or pipe skills process that we currently have. Um, yeah, so, so there are projects that we are running internally. Uh, we're utilizing a number of our professionals. I can tell you now that some of the guys, Zalape Chris and Zitiniu, Tibafuna on other projects as well, especially the engineers. The guys sitting Bafuna Kale, regional director, Akafuni Kwa and Omsegas. And this is, I think these are <clears throat> one of the critical short supply that we have. And we found with the disasters especially, because it disaster programs for both health and education, we are implementing those internally. So we found that we are struggling with those uh, disaster programs because we just don't have the internal resource to be able to run those projects. In Tlambi, by education alone, we're gonna be given 48 projects and you need to go in quickly and come out quickly in those projects. Because if a scholar has blown a roof, it means normal teaching and learning cannot take place. Similarly with e clinics, if a clinic has blown off a roof, it means that the health, and, uh, the health facilities cannot operate and people cannot be taken care of. So this is okay, that are teething within the department. This structure has been approved uh, we were rejoicing, but is it also buyum vasasa la sabon ba ah 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 guka bp? We are still gonna be sitting with problems given what is coming, because what is coming maybe still touching on the professional uh, side of things is that we are a transversal department, and with the transversal new functions are coming in, meaning that we need to monitor all IDT kuha and the like, and. With the capacity that we have, it seems that uh, for us to execute and do that. Uh, moving on to technical services. What technical services is inspectorate and control inspectors. I've got my views and reservations again with inspectorate. And there's a Maguman and his cross at the department in his views. I, 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 I haven't had the significant buy-in that I need, but we, we, we need to have a separation between professional services and technical services. Currently, Mr. Kufa, what is happening is that some of the guys that are on technical services, they will leave professional services, take an inspectorate or control inspectorate post projects professional services because is wired like that. He professional at heart. So technical. projects professional. So one of the things that I've been advocating for is that e colleges 
azinanda for output. Upcourt uh, or in-house remains the only place, and we need to at some point have inspectors that have gone through the trade. Uh, it was only in PE where we had such inspectors that have gone through the background of the trade. I often say the difference is this one, Mr. Goof. I have a BTEC in quantity surveying. This gentleman is a national diploma. We were in the same curriculum, same class, same university. I become a professional. He becomes an inspector. We go to site together. When we go to site, I'm expected to do or to look at the site in a professional eye. He's expected to look at the site in a technical eye. Ufiganga was umsebenzo akepa. Because a, 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 an inspector that has gone through the e trade, first thing when he walks into site, he'll say the peps are not proper, uh, the building is not square. He'll see things which I will not see as a person who's gone through the university side of things. So my view was that let us ensure that we support these colleges. We ensure that the colleges that are around us are able to produce uh, people that are proper from their curricula. Because what will then happen is that the skills pipeline of UPCOD will feed both into in-house and into inspectorate so that we have pure inspectors that are just going there and inspecting on a, on a bi-weekly process and giving us bi-weekly uh, reports. So the, the reason why I say we will be found wanting, who professional services, we can afford not to have them active on transversal, but to inspectorate needs to be active on transversal. Because if there is a Kucha project running in Krisani, we need to have an inspector that is going there, that is ensuring that the quality of that building is proper because we become the custodians of these buildings. So if that quality is not proper, Uma Machana, when she reports, pa, or when she gets a report from Kucha, that says, ah, the project is a Krisani, it's moving along fine. There needs to be a report that comes internally within public works. But the quality there is not right. So that we are able then to provide the monitoring and oversight where a, 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 a um, implementing agent reports this, we can be able to say, ah, ah, client, education or health, it's not like that. What is transpiring there is A, B, and C. And this is the intervention that we need to do to change that situation. So... Tina, if we're going to come in at monitoring and, 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 and evaluation or verification, we need to ensure that we guide the province. That is our role as infrastructure sector, to ensure that the province and whatever we construct, I beg him, anything that has to do with infrastructure, our HOD and MEC needs to be accountable for it. Whether Yenzeka, Kukuha, IDT, or any other implementing agent, because they are the nerve center of infrastructure, because Ngogu Singu, public works and infrastructure. So it means that we need to be responsible for the infrastructure of the province. Um, so it means Umsebenzwe inspectors is going to be a lot. Umdu nobai befu nobai professional, you won't have that luxury of time to be a professional because all the projects that are here in the region, if nega nobai five, no sulale nenge projects as it eight, then zooms again. These are both health and education and the like that are running in, in, in whatever region that you are in. So it means that there's a lot of work that is there. And the capacitation is required from the side of a skills developmental point of view, uh, Mr. Tingwai, to ensure that these inspectors understand their inspectorate and they, 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 they partner or they affiliate to the right professional bodies that speak to inspectorate because pa, Kuko or sends no ISO standards. We've got the PW 371 books that we used to have. Langwadi, Mr. Kufa, it's a, it's a non-existent book, the PW 371. It used to be a book where inspectors would come in and say the quality is wrong, the brick, the brick uh, crushing strength is wrong. Break this whole thing and restart contractor. You know what the standards are supposed to be. So now there is no one that is looking at that aspect. So it means that 
things can crumble. Diko na pa as a professional. Because na my view, mshambi, if and na yola engineer, because in a short supply ye engineers, my view is bana and ya chongba yo kiwena. Not understanding that I'm compromising on quality that is there, and it is not my role and my aspect. So it is those issues, um, colleagues, where I feel that abandona that are in colleges, these are the opportunities that they need to be looking out for to say that Andy Fuunda, what is it that I want to strive and achieve? Uh, then we've got in-house. Yeah, in-house is a problem. Uh, colleagues, uh, it's a problem. It's finally your God. A problem if In house is a challenge because we've got uh, aging uh, infrastructure there at in house. Mata ala matayekopa abambelele and utumtale lagba se you need to go site in etile ati amfanam danke na pe public work sunge kaz salwa no zan. I had a situation, Mr. Kufa, with a portfolio committee visit in Amtata. Uh, upper, we have briefed the portfolio committee that uh, a contractor had suspended work, squares in those on a patali with client aid. So, it toilets is a basic status, wrong or cool. So, we, we said in house, let's buy material in house, just to fix the toilets so that Abandwana will be safe environment. So, as far as we know at head office, work is happening there. Siglemin, uh, a briefing session, we brief the portfolio committee. It's not two days before the committee visits. So, in the pool, may I engage the guys? By my daughter, Senika Bilemospa. Transport. <laughs> so I run to fleet, you know, and when I get to fleet in our time, I'm running to fleet myself now. Fleet, Jani Kunga Biko Transport. I to fleet, no one has ever submitted a, a request for a vehicle. Hey, did you give me this request for a vehicle? See, I sign, I guess I finish. Chance, go there now. It was 11 o'clock. Good to hi, Mr. Nguench. I can't do snow by science. I hope I'm not going to go. Hey! And I'm like, hey, this is a serious problem. I said, okay, no, the following day, first thing in the morning, let's go there. So, the Kwelemo 20 I'm getting, the Nobam Landi Gonda ends of Figa Bang about nine, no one's of Figa Bessabens. The Tech and the Figa Pan, the Figa about past nine, the Figa Hibo. We haven't been paid. So as he pull me before eight, M Sebenzin. Now you're moving from Tata to Mkandul. They are saying as pull me before eight. Fnegi moti pumengo eight up. El kashasinge nangal. Si ambesi M Kandul. We travel for one and a half hour. Half ten. Thirty eighty years old. They, they haven't worked for more than an hour, but at it, uh, seven, uh, till one o'clock, tattoo lunch. In lunch, you put a go to half past two. Banga ne moto en babuela peke because half past four. Nega ba bete bese office. So, so, so I was saying, okay. Now, these are the challenges that we're dealing with, and we're dealing with banda bata la banenkan. And but what to city portfolio committee ah it's not special portfolio committee is a new thing. Tina says our amber with this pace, so it shows that there is a gap where young people need to come in. I worked in a very vibrant region, and at some point I led it all up. There were young people up at the click of a finger, Mr. Gov and Funukog. Those guys would jump because they were hungry for work. But they would not even complain about tools. It's scaffolding. They were using a drama about They were working. They, 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 they were really hungry. So I said, okay, so young people are willing. Uh, but what we need to do maybe in the department is have a strategy of how we're going to be dealing with in-house. EPWP in Alfrenzo started a very good program. They appointed a contractor. <coughs> That contractor did not bring technical staff. 
that contractor had to appoint upcourt students, and those upcourt students built the school. So I'm saying, okay, here if I'm a program manager, I am scared of a risk if the Nika in-house project, because I know it will not be delivered. Let me rather go through a proper procurement process, appoint a contractor who has the capacity to do the work, but within the bill, this is in the briefing, price as a normal contract. But what we're gonna do, see, we're gonna use our own internal skill, go in-house. We'll use your resources, your transport, your tools, everything, and build the school. Because what we want to see, we want to see Bana, Abanye Bakalaza, get resources as If the resources are here, we want to see, are they gonna respond now? If he are fail as the contractor for Kabandu Bakoma so that I don't have a problem of not being able to finish a product that I need to deliver to a client. So that is the approach that we, we, we are planning now, that, okay, if we use this hybrid approach, which will be decisions that will be taken by the region, because Tina, Sibaniki projects, Bendigenda figure pe Chris and Ndati, Kukwiz Kolektua zi ECT, zi Krich, Titi Maske Skale Nipa, Dianinika Imvume Yobana, Nifaku in-house, appoint contractors, but let us utilize in-house because we want to see, we want to give those young people that are within as unit an opportunity to prove themselves. Once they are able to do that, then we are able then to build a capacity of an in-house that can work. Because the in-house where took dollar, if Omar's public works dollar, it was known as a department, there's a truck is yellow, we are asked by you, by a seven, about that. It means that, Mshambi, as this African leadership, he work good as an clean land. And go gear, ya pay to go gear, ya coob. Corner gundo nakele somewhere in the sea put eye. Go go try seat, a corn in the moshakalai. So it means we need to strive to ensure that we bring public works to what it is known for. A, 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 a delivery oriented department. Says Kaliling or professional services. But it, it means that Kasas Kabile must move to other tiers as well. Nalapoke, the opportunities there, the link up between EPWP and that, because we want artisans as in qualifications. So Abandwana Mabafunders College, let them attain their diplomas. Once they are done with their diplomas, let them go through the trade upcord program. That upcord program will ensure that they are trade tested. trade test Then it makes it easy as artisans. Once they do four or five years as artisans, they can go on to be inspectors. So we have a lovely chain that will ensure that we afford opportunity. To, to, to Zongi Spectrum, I say university, uh, colleges, and the like. It's a problem in Gulu Gango, NYS. Can you program Gamshegas about NYS? And a folly anywhere within, within a, a, a formal uh, educational background. A problem is now, they are becoming Omalala. Omakambalala. Ababandubacha. We born a guapag with parking, a public works. Unge guy good, Ubachong, a quest ninda, Babon a guapag with parking, a public works. Ibe Lucy's, born a bandabatala, by a seven. By a chenda. As is young, the helipa has young no call. So it means that the, the hard labor jobs are not fashionable to young people. And we need to make them fashionable because abandu bacha by a lamb. Banabantuan. Eh, Banabantuan. Basokolisa i malizo makulu because i abandon ababo of never be fit way, le grand gamma cool, le mal gamma cool. So yin lagi in the abandabacha abanga funguenzan. I think I spoke with this in those agriculture, kala, nendondon. We need to make this thing fashionable. I think uh, I'm, I'm not shy, Mr. Tingwayo, to, to let some of these graduates that we are producing to become entrepreneurs, Mr. Goof. Yes. They need to open their electrical companies, carpentry uh, companies, 
plumbing companies because aba banga iboni yo lento need to see that you can have a good life uyi subcontractor nje ye electrical now it's not fashionable because umda kaboni into that attracts them in these trades that, that are supposed to be done. So it is your role and duty to make sure that these hard labor jobs, you make them fashionable. So that abandu bazo bane interest your wens umsebenz. The kulegem na gweli nyikta utam kulwa mo ei prikleye. Kanzi nobu ya chaye la chaye soka ati ayaya ikwe tin. Tenisi sanja fnega ta uyenzi ndo uyenzi ngoz misela because ukala up ungaz misela. Nanya nanya indo yenzayo, it won't make sense because I was miselang a window zenzai. So it means that Nalapa go NYS, we need to encourage these guys. Up court, we need to encourage them. Babo ne good is professionals. Kukinda ben genda ikape la gang wanan se chokar. Kwakwindo e classism. E u in house felt less of a class than is is as pagwa professional services. Uh, we, we, I, I, I had to bridge that gap to say, hey, so long as no personal, I was going to figure this in the Diago Artis, the Kaluza Gumi office, the artisans. Did I am banon Linda by office? In no man, the selling no art in no close to 30 minutes, can't figure office in the main for where's Dolo, Mr. Goff. Did you know, man? Lend the color up and wondering, Leobola Lega, because you don't feel like you are part of this department. If you buy party at department, you buy a list of the pants. Only Linda will sell the pants. Now you are waiting for me to tell you about the pants. I think you some cut or till. Or I don't have the kind of lung. Or the out of the house. And I think I got to go to the end of the end. So we, we, we had that problem. And I think it's a problem that cuts across board in all the regions where in-house does not feel like they are part of these guys that are in the office. And maybe not as professionals. We are not welcoming enough. We are not making it a point that these guys feel part of the system because I, 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 that computers programs every month. I need to know niza ukwenza ndonu za wamba na banda banga api. Taipan up e office in. Is in Donis Auzenza, upper Gule office. There's no one on Azulingana. Let's make sure that we are all the same. So, I guess no person like to be in. Sishiana and Jengema Lesengena at the end of each month, but Nalea Ibale Gang. Because Gau Puma outside of public works, no one knows about Mr. Gufupea Malin, except you, Nabandu Bagua Public Works. So, Ibale Gang alone, because you're going to step outside. We are with communities that, with communities that we need to have a friend, your banner, single public works. And the single public works, see I met an agwindo young. These guys noba noba abazu patalo bandendia nikela chance man can yen zautiba because they know that where they need to be taken care of this agwenzi plan yo ba 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 patalo kwa sa sa silwa indo ye indo ina zaman camping allowance that I man good ten is so called is abandu bengos nancy S N T. I malana njia ingine no ba itu run difference. Ta ababandu walape office in bekuwa zuklaimi SNT. Nani no pesal? Ningando ingine don ba ninga zuklaimi SNT. Let's claim SNT. Kwa peluko kwa ababandu ba pata la ba amba ba yezaiti. So I think, e e e problems the scenarios, the solutions is lele kwa la pa good. So as you go out there and talk about the opportunities as kona kwa public works, and yas no ba ibingu Mr D, a city you need to understand the public works. You need to internalize the public works. Umpile the public works. No book way in high level. Whether you are a professional or up court or PP or whatever, whatever level you are in, you need to breathe public works. So yes, but now as is in Gogunga your professional, you know what is happening pa in the in the in the professional arena. Bubu and a clever up in a medicine science. Funding apply and answer pesa when you are a future engineer your public works. So those are the kind of things that Funeka says Jongile, the kind of opportunities that Funeka see Ambe out there, Sayo the preacher, the corner of public works. I think Kukanga go from Ikalalagua buildings in the Snayo. Hey, I'm going to be calling the end of Shia, man. The Chayong. The Chayong. Thank you.
never mind ke clocked on program 2 kuba ke nam dipako program 2 uh unfortunately uh, and kwazo ngabe biased because ndingo wapha ko program 2 Mr Ngwenje and Vuyisa into yoba uthi kwa professional services umsebenzi yabonakala it's very encouraging to hear and come now you are dealing with mostly youth power professional and now we ube afuna ivuma but we former youth abantu who are agents of change as we've said today abantu who are not resistant to change we are happy to reclaim the mandate nani but nani siqela sinisisondeze njengabantu abamhlophe abantu abamhlophe baba sondeza abantu babo baba fundisa from a young age how to do things I think most as ni blame because nani akudalanga ni yenza lento nifuna ususonde za ngose ni phuma ezinye izinto senizilibele ezinye izinto senisithi thina siqhela ukwenza kanje ingase niqala ususonde za kuni na ngoku sizofunda ba athina amaqhinga e construction singabantu abamnyama si ready and then moving on sizaqela u Mr Kalele ka program 3 Thanks. Uh, my name is Debo Kalele. I'm from EPWP. Uh, we are given a simple task to come and present the programs that we are having qua EPWP. I think the program that has been in the mouth of most of the people from the morning is the UPCOT program. Uh, most of you might know UPCOT but few might not know APCOT. The APCOT is Accelerated Professional Trade Competency Development Program, which is aimed to produce a trade-tested artisans. I'm not sure, okay. Which is meant to produce trade-tested artisans. So when we are producing these trade-tested artisans, we are responding to National Call for Skills Development of 2030, whereby we need to produce so much artisan within South Africa. So, who up caught K, say, 2007, till today we are still impl implementing the program. We recruit or we have the MOU with the TVET colleges because it's not everybody that will be a professional that like Mr. Nkwenja have said. Some of our kids are going to the TVET colleges. So the program, we source our learners from the TVET colleges uh, within five different uh, uh, trades that they are doing. The first one is bricklaying, carpentry, plumbing, electrician, mechanics, and painting. Those are the trades that we are targeting uh, the learners to be part of the program. Uh, the minimum requirements for those entries is that at least we want a learner to have an N2 qualification on bricklaying, carpentry, uh, plumbing. And then if a learner wants to do mechanical and electrical, the minimum requirement for that is a N3 qualification. Uh, we do have a plus minus 1,060 learners that are currently on the program that are all throughout the regions. Uh, those upcourt learners, as Mr. Mgwenja was saying that, uh, our artisans in all the regions have aged, okay, they are aging. They are 95% close to retirement. So most of the people that are doing the work, this in-house work that Mr. Mgwenja was talking about, are these young fellows, the upcourt learners. Uh, after these upcourt learners have been trained within the department, we send them to the, t to the training centers 
whether Ebay, Okanye Ace, London, to do a pre-trade. Then after that, they do the something that is called ARPL to check their readiness for the trade test. Then after they have done that, they go for a trade test. Uh, we do give these learners a stipend of 3,000 a month. We provide them with PPE. We, we provide them with tools and material as well. So basically, that's the UPCOT program that we are having. To date, we have 1,441 UPCOT artisans that have passed the trade test in different categories. Uh, some of those learners that have passed the, the UPCOT uh, trade test, within the exit strategy of the program, there are four exit strategy. The first one is the one that I alluded to earlier on, <coughs> to say that uh, we are talking about absorption for these kids. But I know OHRK, we are not there yet about the absorption. But we are saying at least a certain percentage of those learners must be, must be targeted as the department to go and bridge that gap that we talked about this morning that most of our artisans are aging or are close to the retirement. And we have produced these artisans and we produce them and then they leave. We are not saying all of them should be employed because as part of the exit strategy, the second ex exit strategy that we are having, we are saying that they must form SSCs. SSC is a small specialist contractor. It's a group of bricklayers that will be doing labor-only projects. If a contractor X has got a project, we say we have this group of bricklayers that have passed the trade test that we guarantee if you use those bricklayers, we won't compromise the quality of the project that we'll be doing. So that's where we are going. That's what we are doing currently. We are encouraging these kids uh, to form cooperatives in all the categories that we are training them on. Then the other one that we say that they must do, we are encouraging them to form e-businesses uh, to be a contractor. Because we believe that it is them that really understand the terms and everything that is talked under construction more than even a person that is just decided to wake up and become a contractor. So those are the right people that we are saying in the department. Let's utilize these people. Let's support those small companies that they are going to develop and we make the work packages for them. And then the second program that we are having is NYS. NYS is National Youth uh, Program that we uh, before we, it was not uh, fully structured like it is currently now. That we are saying the NYS that we are having now is going to be a feeder to the UPCOT program. In, what's, uh, in the sense that uh, this NYS, we send the minimum requirements for them to be part of the NYS. It's a metric, at least. Uh, if that person decided to be on the NYS or Elena is on the NYS, after 18 months, we assess that the competency of that learner that was on the NYS program. If the learner passes 50% of the modules that they were doing, if they were a bricklayer, they pass 50% with the training institutions, automatically that learner is going to graduate into the UPCOT program although they didn't have the end qualification. But because they have done the RPL, they're going to be part of the upcourt. That's what we are trying to encourage so that they must not feel like because they didn't go to the colleges, they cannot be artisans. Because the way NYS was structured before, it was just for people to be handy person, to be able to take out a log, to be able to put in a glazing, jalonjal without having a proper qualification. But now we are training them so that they know that at the end of their term of 18 months, the ones that are serious about being part of the program, they will graduate into the upcourt, whereby they will just do two and a half years 
because they already have 18 months. So after that, they will be able to qualify for the trade test and go for a trade test and believe to be a fully qualified artisan. That's the second program that we are doing at EPWP. The third one that we are doing as EPWP, we are doing a program called uh, Integrated Contractor Development Program. It's whereby we are targeting contractors from grade one to grade six uh, in different categories of the CIDB classes of works. So there we put them in a program for, for a period of three years. Our target there as well, we are also targeting the youth there to be part of the program. Currently, I think 60% of our program on ICDP was youth. Out of 160 contractors, we had 97 contractors that were youth companies that have been trained and been awarded projects to the value of 280 82 million to date. So there is a progress that we have done. Most of those contractors have even upgraded to the higher CIDB grading. Some of them are grade fives contractors, female companies that of youth people. Uh, some of them are even at grade six contractors now, but they started at grade two and grade three contractors when they came into the program. Uh, the third program, the fourth program that we are having as EPWP, or before I leave that, there is this program that Mr. Mkwenja talked about, whereby we are saying that the contractors on the ICDP, we make a, doc a tender for them, but we make a condition on that tender that you as a contractor on the ICDP, for us to, uh, to award you, you need to take these learners of APCOT program to your project. You employ the ones that have passed the trade test. You use them to do the project. I think there are three projects that are almost complete now that we did in Alfred and Zo. It's OR Technical School. We employed a contractor. He used fully upcut there. Uh, Mount Elif as well. He, we employed a contractor there. He used upcut students that have passed the trade test. M. Fazwe. Now it will be those three projects, I think soon they will be handed over. Uh, we used the, the same method whereby we say, contractor, come when now with your resources, but we will give you the artisans to do the project. And those people that are working with the in-house teams. So I think, oh, Mr. Mkwencha, if you can really take that and we implement it all throughout the region, that, that strategy that we are implementing is working. Because it's then that even the in-house teams, they feel like they are really utilized because all the resources are there for them to, to implement the project. And the second last program that we are having as EPWP, we are recruiting a youth uh, to be placed at the prestige houses or ministerial complex. Those young people that we place there, we have trained them to do landscaping. I think before the department used to employ a contractor to do landscaping within the parliament, uh, uh, that area of the minister's complex. They were done by the contractors, the landscaping there. But as for the beginning, from the beginning of this financial year, we have uh, appointed a contractor that was doing the landscaping. And then we told the contractor, contractor, you're not going to bring anybody from your team. We are going to employ young people for you that you will be teaching how to use the mowers, using all the me machines, all the machineries that are used to do the grass cutting, the mowers, and all that, even to know how to teach them how to plant different flowers there. So currently, the people that are doing that work there are the youth that we have employed. At the end of the day, we are going to train those youth to open their own companies and register with CIDB SH, SH companies for them to be specialists on landscaping. Uh, those are the few programs that we are having as the EPWP. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much, Mr. Kalele. Um, I think she surely tried to 
tizakela u program one o Mr. Tinguayo. Quickly before we can take questions and we can have a discussion about what was said between the three programs. Thank you, Mr. D. Young people can can, can start uh, taking notes um, because uh, I believe that is not inward um, looking uh, session. No, I think it's neither of it. Okay. Um, sorry. Is it compatible? Not compatible. Finally. Okay, colleagues, let's, let's continue. Uh, I will talk um, while they are busy with their technology. Um, colleagues, uh, I, I, I will talk about the, the, the highlights, uh, our critical, uh, about critical points within the, the built and property sector in, in, the, in, the, in the department. Uh, I quickly, while I was sitting there at the back, I quickly look at... Um, the, the establishment of, of public works, the data, as from 1st of, of June. I've noted that the, the young people in the, in the department, I will include um, NYS, UPCOD, um, uh, TVET learners, structured um, candidates, and everyone that is available in PESAL. There are 1,214. That were there. Then that, those people they belong to um, Z generation, and the youngest was born in 1999. That is in the employee of the department. So 1999, some of us were already first. Then the oldest person that I've noted was born in 1957. Uh, that person belongs to baby boomer. So there's a, there's a four generations in the, in the Department of Public Works. Uh, baby boomers, those were born 1957 to 1965. X generations, 
we belong there. Um, no, Mr. Gufa, no, no, Mandela. Then there is a white generation, the, the millenniums, the, 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 the one of Omu oh, 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 Mr. they are the millenniums. So they, they belong there. So there's a lot of, um, if I can talk about that, I can take the whole 30 minutes. Then, colleagues, with no time, it, it, to, the, to now is 2022. In eight years' time, someone that was born in 2010 will be in the public service. Those will be alpha generation coming. Is the department ready to have all these uh, kind of um, uh, generations? Um, there will be always four generations, of which one area that we, we need to look at as corporate services is of the gener generation gap. Because it does happen. Nami and Kapazel and everyone else that is a bit older. So it's one area. Then as well, colleagues, I won't talk much about that because it was touched by the previous speakers, the ease of the poverty, the unemployment, the social inequality, the environmental that is, that is degrading. So, so colleagues, as, as the youth of today, whenever, when, when you have time to look at this document, please, please bear in mind about the challenges that this country is facing, more especially the, the province. If you look at the queues, now when I was coming here, I saw a queue, a person, there's a long choose throughout. It's difficult to get the European this time of the month because of the long choose. So when you develop this, 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 uh, this policy, look at these particular challenges, the unemployment, uh, the, all those social um, ills that we're facing as a province because it's, it's a problem. I was listening to Pekitka yesterday and President and, 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 and Honorable Lamla yesterday. They touched a lot of uh, um, touching statistics. Uh, about the, the, the abuse and, and everything that's happening there. So colleagues must look at it you know, when you do your policing. You know. I want to talk about the NDP, SDGs, everyone, the, the speakers before me, they always, they already touch. I want to talk about Vision 2030. But one thing that I would like to see is for the, the, the study to be done, whether by the scholars, whether the, the NDP Vision 2030 was really implemented <laughs> in this country because in 2012 they said they're gonna have about 14 percent. Um, they will reduce employment to, to 14 percent. Now the employment is talking is about over 40 percent. So that and there's a lot of money that has been invested on the NDP. If, if a scholar can look at that, whoever wants to do a research in public public management or administration, they can look at that. The implementation of the Vision 2030. Um, the, I won't talk about that as well. It was already been touched. Um, colleagues, as you are aware, um, public service is heavily regulated. When you're drafting this policy, please look at the Constitution, more especially Chapter 10 of the Constitution. The Public Service Regulation, the Skilled Domain Act, um, they, will give, they, will, they will actually empower this document um, and other, other, other policies like Youth Accord and, yeah, then I'll let's keep this one, let me skip this one, let me skip this one. People have already talked about it. Uh, colleagues, the, the public service that we are today did not start in 1994. It started as early as Mr. Nguenja mentioned earlier on, because there was government there. So there were policies that were, that were, that were, that were uh, formulated and approved. Then even the, the brief, before 1994, there was the TVV states that, was, um, that had policies that were governing the public service, more especially human resource development. Then the, the, we, we were blessed generation because this transition happened while we were there when the, um, the, the, the government um, of the ANC took control of this country. They ensured that they come up with a new constitution um, that was um, um, adopted in 1996. They came up with the Public Service Act 1994. They came up with the SACWA Act. They came up with um, uh, white papers. So there were strategies. Please, when you happen to draft this document, also look at that. What, what is it saying about young people, about the, 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 the land of development um, um, in the public service? And now there's a new baby that is coming. The ease of professionalization in the public service. Also, if this document that you are going to develop, 
want to have an impact. Please also make emphasis to issue of professionalization. Professionalization is not only buildings, colleagues, or properties. Every unit within the department is supposed to be professionalized. If you look at legal services, the guys in legal services, they have to admit it as an attorney, as an attorney. If you look at finance, it's only CFO that is required to be a, a CA in, in the department. Other employees that are, that are spending billions of rents are not really required in program one. Supply chain are spending billions. I don't know if budget of public works is over two billion. And those guys are procuring millions of rents, and yet they are not really um, 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 uh, professionalized. And human resource management is also appointing people who are making mistakes. So which means that HR also is supposed to be, to be professionalized so that when we, do, when we carry our responsibility, our mandate, we know that we carry the mandate uh, under the umbrella or auspices of the professional body. There's the SAPPP, there's the SAPAM that we can adhere, uh, actually uh, belong to. So the issue of professionalization need to be so that every unit within the, 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 the public, public works uh, should have a, a sort of um, um, alignment in the professional council. And particular colleagues, bear in mind, the issue of professionalization needs, needs money uh, because the fees need to be paid. Uh, colleagues, I, I looked at the two days ago, again, the ease of the infrastructure budget in this country. It's about 810-12 billion rands for the infrastructure budget in the country. Then I asked these questions, who is implementing this budget? How many people that are employed in the, in the, in the infrastructure departments, such as Department of Transport, Department of Public Works, uh, across the, the all spheres of government, local government, in everywhere. Who is, who, how many people do we have there? How many engineers do we have? How many professionals do we have there to implement such budget? Because if you look at, uh, at, at, at health, you know doctors, they, they sit in, in clinics, in hospitals, they, they really help patients in the public, in, the, in, in, the, in, in, in health. Teachers, you'll find them in class, and you'll find them marking exams. Then in, in, in public works, tenders a lot. There's little that's done in terms of, um, in terms of, um, uh, of, of implementing in-house projects, of which is one area is young people. If you want to change the space, that you must influence that. At least even if it's 20% of, the, of, of, of these billions are implemented in-house by the, by the people that, that actually qualified. So once you do that, you will see that a number of people will be employed for longer than the two years three years, four years, because the in-house projects will be um, um, continuing. And Mr. Kweya made a, con a, a, commit a, a confirmation that there was a project that was implemented. We know that it can work. It's just that it's a, it's a, it's a delivery model that you can influence, uh, colleagues. I won't talk about this slide. Um, it's too much. Colleagues, the, 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 there are six councils that they belong to to CPE. Uh, those councils, EXA, SACLAP, SACAP, um, SACQSP, the one of QSEs, the one of construction project manage, uh, managers, SACPVP. But the second one from the last, uh, the one, the second one from the last, uh, even now I can register there as a, as a, as a, as a, as a candidate. While I'm having my qualifications in human resources, but if I can do a project, a qualification in project management, I can register there. So it's one area when Mr. K is appointing, is reviewing the policy, of HR policies, you need to look at it closely. But colleagues, if you look at these councils, there are few people or few employees that, are, uh, that actually um, uh, belong in these councils, of which, um, as well, these councils are not. Um, 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 the, the CPE does not take all the councils that are involved in the, in the construction industry. For instance, you cannot build a, a property without touching base with the environmental sector. So there are a number of councils uh, that are supposed to also fall under the CPE, of which is one, is one TP that we are actually touching. Then, colleagues, on this one, the, the slides from CPE. Right now, the majority 
of registered professionals is males than females. It's one area, colleagues, that you can look at. That how do we put more women to be registered professionals within since the history of public service, um, of, of public works is 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 is, is um is, is the history is that tells us that it's it's it's, 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 it's male dominated. Uh, Mr. Kwa, that's a base, but I cannot say the way he was putting it, uh, the ease of transformation, because there's, there's a camera here. But the but the truth is, colleagues, <laughs> the truth is, colleagues, the whites. Are, are dominating the built environment. And uh, even if I look inside the room, there's not even a white person here. Why? Is there a white person here? No. Uh -uh. Uh, colleagues, which means that there is a, ch there is a, a challenge is of, of transformation with this country. So, so somewhere, somehow, as young people that were born, uh, some of you were born after 994, when this country is actually a democratic country. Uh, the apartheid uh, regime was removed. So you can, you can actually influence other uh, counterparts that were studying with at university. Some of them, you're staying in them at the residential areas in the universities. So the Africans, only 24%, and then the whites is 66%, and the, 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 Indians, um, the Indians are 6%. Of which is Indians, if you look at the percentage of Indians, when you look at the ratio of, of South Africans, the Indians, they, they are, it's much there if you look at that slide, because in, in Indians are the minority, but then yet they've got more professionals, of which is one area colleagues you can look at, so that you can, you can be jealous um, in terms of this. You know. Then I zoom in in EXA, particularly in EXA, because EXA had huge numbers. If you look at EXA colleagues, EXA is having 92% of registered male, males, and 8% is only females. Yeah, Exa colleagues is that council does with engineering. Anything else engineering related, be a technician, technologist, or PR, they've got registered professionals of, of, of 92%. Then if you look at the, 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 the whites in particular, whites are sitting at 69%. So, Dina Sixulalanangalot, 29% to make 100%. So, as you can see, colleagues, it's, it's bad. Né? So, we need to put more. And, colleagues, if we don't change the, the leadership in these councils, it, what we're doing is a drop in the ocean of, of developing these people. We need to have our own people that are sitting in these boards. That are, we, have, we need to have our own people that are actually uh, conducting these sort of interviews. We need to have our own people who are developing the legislation and everything. But if then oh, oh, we are there from far away from the council itself, and we only have the minister from, from National Development Public Works and, 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 the, and the, the African gentleman that is leading CPE, and yet the council is a little white, we're still like, going to have a huge problem in that particular space. Colleagues, I won't talk about the slides, but it shows you exactly that in terms of professional councils, um, the, the, Af the African, f uh, the, actually the, the, the males are sitting at 88% um, because of, of those uh, males that are, are, are too much whites. And, and actually what is required is that males are supposed to sit at 49%. And the females are sitting at 12%. What we actually need is 51%. Then the Indians are sitting at uh, 7%. What you actually need is 3%. So the colors are sitting at um, 3%. What you actually need is um, 8%. So that is what is needed by this country. It's, 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 a, it's a continue to be a challenge. What is the problem, colleagues? I'm zooming into Eastern Cape now because there is a problem that that contributes to that contributes to to this particular doors. Nibonai. One, as Eastern Cape, this slide I got from Exa, from land from Exec. So in 2008, the Department of Education in the Eastern Cape registered 221,000 students. Then in 2020, 82 students wrote metric. Over 100 and something students dropped from the or from the as, uh, from the for the from the years that are continuing, so it simple says, colleagues, 
There is not a child that is born as a para. That's number one. There's not even a child that is born and grew up without att attending grade one. Then most of things happens after grade one. Then the, the majority of these guys that left here, you'll find them, call my friend, as the tellers. You'll find them in the streets. You'll find them in the taxi industry. You'll find them at Tibet colleges. You'll find them all over. Some of them, they went back, to, they went to Cape Town through these buses in Yugav. Some of them are in Jobek, they, through immigration. So, as a province, we're having a problem. And, and, and I just want to check other provinces, the same slide, and compare with the Western Cape and other provinces. How, how, how is that slide continuing? Then, another problem, Mr. Nguencha and, 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 and Canada is coming closer to you now. The average pass rate of mathematics in the province is 39.7% in 2020. And average pass rate of physical science is 55.6%. So, so it's coming closer to you. Because if, if then we, we need engineers, we need QSCs, we need uh, project managers, we need all these things, they need medicine science. And the medicine science is needed by doctors. The medicine science is needed by the, by the, by the, by the scientists. So which means that there's going to be little throughput that goes to built environment in the, in the, in the, in the universities. Or we'll get those that are not really uh, PSC students or PN students. Those that are technologists, uh, kind of, or, yeah, or technicians, kind of. I'm not saying they are low, but uh, they are technologists. <laughs> so, so, colleagues, uh, um, the root causes for this problem, ne? sorry guys to, to, to say, ne? but I normally say the, the PSCs are those that go for four years at VETS, UCT, and they, they need to pass with those flying colors to be admitted there. The structural engineers, you can't find a structural engineer that is having an advanced diploma or PTEC. Um, they need to have PSCs, and there are few of which is the area that the department we are investing to. So the problem, colleagues, is starting from the, the supply, the parents. That, that is you uh, today. Because Tina, our parents they didn't make a mistake. They were looking at the books. Tina, as parents, we don't have time to look at the books of our kids. We don't assist them with the, with the homework. We, we, or maybe the teachers as well. They are also contributing. Then the issue of primary education, colleagues, it also contributes um, the primary education. Primary education, your colleagues, is that education start from there. Your pedagogy stand at five. That is grade um, seven. That primary education. Then, colleagues, it comes to secondary education. We, we need to have interest in our in the education of our, 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 even where we are staying. Because in these schools, they are changing the, the syllabus uh, as they wish. You find that certain schools, they will stop teaching accounting or maths and accounting. They will stop teaching physical science uh, and, and mathemati mathematics. They will, they will come up with this history because it's easy to do. If it's not history, something else these days. Then we need to, to ensure that we're coming closer to secondary education um, if we want to have a, a, a landed throughput in the universities. Then we need to have partnership with the higher learning to ensure that these learners are given more support. The universities, they come closer to, 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 the, to, to the high schools and teachers also go accessing the workshop. I spoke with one teacher, that is a, is a mess teacher. He said, last time I attended a, a workshop, it was three years ago. A mass workshop, and then doesn't even have the education doesn't even have time to do these workshops for certain teachers, more especially in the remote areas. The employers, the employers should come in. It's you, get colleagues, that you must look at it. And then the, then the, the ease of aging workforce, uh, Mr. Mr. Kwenja, who touched base on it. Then th that aging workforce is contributing the ease of the the the, the, the youth, ne? Uh, the unemployment youth, because if those guys can leave the service at least age of 55, they can, the youth can come in. So colleagues, it continues and continues. Ne? I've got solutions here, I can share this slide quickly because I'm shown so pressure. The, the, I said, ne, the cause of deficiency, colleagues, I said minimum number of learners doing math and science, 
at high schools, low pass rate, math and science in universities, entrance, low graduate throughputs, lack of built environment, career awareness, lack of understanding in the sector and the career path. So colleagues is one of those things that, you must, that must be done. Eh? And then one area as department are doing is a schools program. The department adopted a, 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 a professional development strategy. Eh? And then in this strategy, the schools program, that, that, that I, won't, I won't lie, the way that it's been implemented is not the way you're supposed to be implementing schools program. Schools program is a KRA at its own. For someone senior, or deputy director, or standing director, we need to adopt schools. And luckily, at Nelson Mandela University, there's a, there's a Govan Bakey Math and Science Center. Those guys can be able to, to talk to schools that are in the remote areas. That we, as a department, we need to partner with that. You know? We need to partner with the, the university so that our learners can be assisted. But of those schools are going to adopt in math and science. The interventions of the learners, the teachers, and management, school management, we need that. Because if we want to transform or change certain area, we need to ensure that Pasari Awards, um, Pasari Care, of which on this one, we, we are coming closer, Mr. Kwe. What you, when we Mr. Quench, what you raised, it was raised by the accounting officer several times. Now it's gone when we award a passer for someone who's studying at, or, or matriculated at Quintal 5 High School, Quintal 4, Quintal 99. Quintal 99 is private, so it's land, it's private, it's land. We're going to award passers to students who matriculated at Quintal 1, at a bigger percentage, Quintal 2, at a medium percentage, at Quintal 3 medium percentage as well there. And now, going forward, our passaries will be awarded to students who are doing advanced qualifications, advanced diplomas, or PTX if they are still PTX, and honors and masters. We are not going to award passaries for, 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 for entry qualification. And as far as colleagues, is free, is free for everyone. It's a free education in this country. So if a person is really struggling, they must go through NSFAS for a junior qualification. Then you award for where, from where NSFAS is not awarding. Because we can't spend taxpayers' money to award, to do a, 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 a double dipping. NSFAS is there most to award the first degree. Then for, for where NSFAS stops, we come in as a public, public works. We continue with the students. We get the doctrine there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, good colleagues. <laughs> colleagues, another thing as well, ne? There's a skills pipeline for multiplication plan for the, for, the, for the Department of Public Works sector. So, so what we've done, uh, actually, what is the public service saying, colleagues, ne? Um, as one of the priority one intervention of infrastructure investment delivery, ne? is that we need to target, uh, we need targeted groups ne? Um, for unskilled and low-skilled youth, women and adults, or adults. Ne? We need to have youth that is... Um, 35% uh, in all our, our programs, né? we must ensure that at least youth that is, that is that, that's younger than the age of 35 is appointed at 80%. Then the women, they must at least 50% in all youth programs or more. We can't have a youth program. Even now in advertising internship, we must ensure that it's 50%. If then we cannot get 50%, we must do an advertisement. Same as bursaries. I can't uh, take a submission, take a submission to HOD. That is having a percentage that is, that is, that is uh, uh, lower than 50%. All, all, in all the, the programs that are implementing on diploma programs, the, those two, I must ensure that they, 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 they um, I, 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 land, I contribute. Then, your colleagues, the department is having um, these following programs. Né? The candidacy program, that is for eight months, the internship program, graduate technical internship, those ones we appoint the ex passar holders. When we are give someone a passar to study, we give that person a, a, a contract of two years to serve contractual obligation. Then that person is appointed as a technical intern for, that, for those two years. If that person is appointed by any parastatal or by any government department, we allow that person to go, but we're gonna follow that person to serve the contractual obligation well in that particular parastatal, as well as confined within the, the department. Then the, there's a graduate internship program, is what we're having. There's a, there's a pre-serving uh, training, that is the TVET learners for 18 months. They structured, 
This one called the Instructor Program, it was the pilot project. We started the head office, appointed 20. So those learners are, are finishing next year. We go, now, yesterday, I spoke with the TV director in my office and, and the assistant director. On, my, on next week, the HOD will sign a submission for the advertisement for the next year intake. Um, then this program will go out throughout the provinces, um, to, throughout the, the regions in the province, so that at least we also implement what we've, we've seen the challenges. Then there is an um, artisanship program. Then on this one, the colleagues, I won't talk about certification, but the ease of career exposed and awareness is we, we are required by the by the cabinet to as a public sec, public work sector to have 33,000 uh, learners who attend our career expo across the country. This uh, target is, is is due by the 31st of March 2020. And as well, the passage scheme for the public sec, public work sector, we need 500 passages. All other provinces, colleagues, including the national department, they are what passages. And we've got um, candidacy program is 1.5, of which the Department of Public Works, we are contributing here at 90, 90, 95 uh, candidates. Then the numbers continues. Co continues yeah. Then I will skip this one. But our partners, the colleagues uh, in these programs, the Department of Higher Education and its entities, the C CIDP, the UIF, the host employers, and every NYDA, DTI, and the Literal Development Bank is where you're going to get funds. Colleagues, I talked about the, 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 the strategy. The strategy is there, colleagues. It was approved in 2019, uh, 2018, in June, by the, the current Director General of, the, of National Department of Transport, who advocate James Nlao. He was the head of department in this department. Um, then the, the strategy wasn't going to be there, colleagues, if guys like Mr. Nkwenja, was not like a nail in our necks. Uh, every day he will knock in the offices and talk about this thing. And at times we ignored him as, 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 always, as, as, it, as, as, as it is done uh, elsewhere. <laughs> then he, he was persistent to such that when someone is persistent, you start listening. Then you start doing the research, you start doing the homework, you do the, this whole thing. Then. If it was not, that our department was not going to be having the strategy. And then Mr. Kufa came in, then he put it, um, 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 a direct, he gave a direction in the, in the development strategy. Then the strategy was, was actually done um, and, and approved. Then the, it was implemented to this crew. Uh, unfortunately, those that were, 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 were participated in the strategy for the first time, their contract will be coming to an end next year. I don't know what would be their future then, but what we encourage them <laughs> is that they must uh, obtain their professional status so that, um, so that um, at least uh, the department can say that from this group, so many groups obtain their professional status. And, and, and your colleagues, I want to encourage you that please try your level best that you, you obtain your registration. And yesterday, an email came in, one guy obtained a professional status from CPM. Uh, so colleagues, I, can, I can know the majority of you attended mock interviews. Please continue. Then the, there's a new group that came in in, 20, in January 20, 2019 to April. Their contracts are ending in April. Then um, there's a new group of technical interns that they took us to, to political parties and to, to all elsewhere. Their contract came to an end in September last year, uh, this year. So there's a group of technical interns now that are still in the, in the public service, about 38 in the department. So colleagues, we are continuing the strategy. By the way, Mr. Kweya, together with this team, will be offering the numbers of the new candidates that they need in, build, in, in program two to corporate services for the advertisement for the new intake that will take place in April next year because I don't know what will happen, but we need new intake that will be coming from the, from the new passage holders that, will, that finish their studies across the, the province. So, but I said to Mr. Kufa, the, the buildings must put in that in writing, that when they give us these numbers, these people will obtain their professional registration within the department, they'll only be seconded to the private sector. 
because if they are going to private sector, it will be double dipping. So they can't give us numbers to, for private sector. They must give numbers for public works. There are guys that I know in, in QS, they were never seconded. In CPM, they were never seconded. In architecture, they were never seconded. In, uh, in all this, even now, I went to do a figure. architecture, they never seconded. Nabanya, they never seconded. And then they are obtaining a professional status. So they must give us, even if they are 10, uh, um, um, uh, it's fine. <laughs> then, according to the vehicles is used, you know, it's a full strategy. I already talked about that school, so I won't repeat it. You know. We adopt schools, we assist them in medicine science, of which is a, is a wish, we've not yet done it. We assist mature children, it's still a wish, we have not done it. Career exhibitions, we do it. Awarding passaries, we do it. Then, intermediate, we, we do have um, partnership with, 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 with education high learning. We have uh, partnership with CITAS. We monitor passers. We have graduate technical internships. We had candidacy program. We've got will, we've got internships. We do that one. Intermediate, 100%. Then push. Then is where there's a new structure now, a new organogram, is when we're going to retain these candidates. Among of, of the young people, there are those that I know that were appointed uh, in the in the vacant position. That is part of retention. Even if it's not, you are not appointed by the department, the provincial Eastern Cape Department of Public Works, you are appointed the Western Cape, appointed the National Department of Public Works, or in Mpumalang, or in Mpopo, it's part of the retention strategy. Because as a, depart as a public sector, public works sector, all of us were implementing the same strategy. We took a resolution there in the Capacity Building Forum. If you are candidate in the public works for five years, you can't jump ship to Lipopo or jump ship to the National Department. Once you finish, you can finish, you can continue elsewhere, not in the public works sector. It's not my decision, guys. It's a decision of public. <laughs> there's a purpose, there's a London, they cover this, I won't touch it. Colleagues, this is the budget for development programs. I will, th those numbers are huge. I didn't even want to add them at the bottom. At, at the bottom. But for candidates' program, we're spending over 50 million. For technical interns, we're spending, uh, for internship programs, we're spending over 15 million. For um, um, learnerships, um, for TVET learners, we're spending about uh, 4.1 million. For uh, NYS, there's money for them. For, 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 for UpCourt, there's money for them, 28 million. 28 million goes for UpCourt. Um, and as well, for bursaries, 10.7 uh, million goes for bursaries. That's why, that's why we took a resolution that no more advertising passaries and then the, the, the mid-class children benefit. We go straight from advance for, the, for those that were in NSFAS or they can prove. Then these are the numbers, colleagues. I want, I want um, colleagues, let, let's be realistic. Ne? It's fine. It's going to be Uh, we've done, Mr. Nkwenja, this is serious. Uh, for, for, for a student registered at the best university, or UCT, or Luta, or, or, or UKZN, or Nelson Mandela University, to do a BSc, or University of Pretoria, to do a BSc, for a period of four years, without doing the, the bridging course for a year, that they, call, they normally call the sectarian program, ne? Yes, for five, for five years, for five years, because you're a black child. <laughs> then, then for, for, for four years, it's, uh, it's about four, 580,000 at UCT. If then you're coming from the missing middle, a teacher, a principal, how are you going to afford those fees? It's, it's a struggle of the working class. Then if you're coming from the poor, without NSFAS, you are really poor, there's no NSFAS. It's the youth that is here today must assist those students who are coming from the province, disadvantaged areas, that they know that they, they are coming from the poor and NSFAS of system. You guys can come in to ensure that NSFAS opens because 580,000 over a period of four years, how are you gonna get that? You can't afford that. Then now, for, for a, where is this business coming in the department? That's why you see them driving the ah, car. These digitized, very nice. <laughs> because over three or four years, 
They're earning over 2, 2.6 million as a form of salary. I'm talking about those that are high in the end. I'm not talking about technicians. I'm talking about QSs, CPMs, engineers, 2.6 over, over, over two years, over, over three or four years. Then, as a department, we need to let them go. <laughs> the number of candidates, colleagues, I won't talk about that. You know? But I will, will talk about the, the, I will talk about the, 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 good, the good story to tell. The good story to tell is that from the program itself, the department uh, managed to produce 25 um, um, registered professionals across these disciplines. So there's a good story to tell. And I know now by end of December, some of them, I won't mention their names, that one who mock interview, some of them have been given dates by the professional councils, who PMO is assisting them very well in that particular space. So colleagues, I want to encourage you to really obtain the, the, the professional status while they're still in the department, because once you're outside, it's cold there. <laughs> <laughs> We are having registered professionals that is equal to nine. Uh, the majority on this one is architecture, ne? no, it's, 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 it's engineers, ne? It's, it's 37 EXA in the, in the department. It's 37, those belong to EXA. Um, we've got 13 that are in the, in the, in the architectural. We've got 12 that are in the CPM. We've got um, 21 in the, in the, in the QSs. We've got zero in the property. In the tech. Actually, guys, it's a such story. In properties, we've got a budget of 1.9 billion, and there is no professional that is really registered in the space. It's one area that job management should look at it at and so. So that at least whoever is prepared there, that person obtained a kind of a professional status. Um, or else those that are already there they are really capacitated to, to obtain such requirements. Then in the department, there are three senior managers that have that are permanently permanently employed, if I'm not mistaken. It's Mr. Tuaya, Mamukhao, Mamukyakela, only three. About uh, talk about senior management. I saw the requirement that guys for a senior manager to be rich, to, to be a rich dad. Because they were not appointed in the OHD, but our own SMSN. So, but these ones, they need to have professional status. Therefore, Mr. K, I requested him, uh, together with HR, to issue a circular to request all these 90 employees to send their registration state and uh, certificate so that we really know that we've got these people. Because I've got stats, I don't have really proof whether these people they really obtain their professional status <laughs> or they are up to date in terms of paying the restriction fees as with the OST. Mm. <laughs> so it's, it's one area guys that we need to look at as a department if we are really serious about, 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 about these things. Um, um, colleagues, there is the fourth industrial revolution that is talked about. The reason that I include this slide is for you guys as young people to, to have, to bear in mind the issues of the fourth industrial revolution. The country is changing faster uh, and, and it's, it's changing very fast such that uh, a, a, a three-year-old child can operate a tablet or a cell phone without teaching a person. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and some kids can and some kids are elsewhere in the country can do um, e, e coding without being um, um, a thought uh, or, uh, or other countries that what they are teaching their learners. So colleagues, ease of BI, of, of BI, BIM is there, ease of digital teams is there, ease of artificial intelligence, I'll talk later about it, ease of robotics is, is supposed to be there, more especially in the built environment. The robotics are there. If then Mr. Goenja, the, the older guys are relaxing, then you talk of look at how do you include the robotics in, in the built and in the built environment. Uh, the ease of the, um, the the green building. You you are liking the green building. You even develop the policy 
But today, to finish off the presentation, what are we doing? I don't know where the title is. So, it's not green building. But there is a department. We need to look at it. Then, there's a thing about yesterday, I was listening to Utatus Nukus Galala on SAFM. If you are doing the Deputy Minister of Health about um, the, the current situation of South Africa and health industry. Then, Utatus Nukus Galala was talking about the good story of Singapore. And Singapore is doing something good, of which that Mamuno Mandela, since Mamuno Utland Utsaluza, can look at how do we then, as a, as a department of public works, benchmark in these countries and come up with solutions that can help uh, uh, fast tracking the infrastructure in the department. The last time that people went out here, it was before 2010. No one ever benchmarked here in the department. Um, the ease of uh, the, the uh, United Arab, uh, Arab Emirates, they've got best practices. UK, they've got best practices. Japan, they've got best practices. South Africa, through Tatu Ramaphosa, they come up with a smart city that is still being built somewhere next to the uh, land area. Then, call it the ease of artificial intelligence. It's, um, it's, a, it's a continuing, con con continuing discussion. If you look at Singapore, already ease of smart city is, is been there, it's been talked about. So, the artificial intelligence colleagues, artificial intelligence colleagues, you can see it in the cars that you are you, you are driving you are driving that you're driving or driving driven by someone else. When they are stopping in the robots, these cars they switch off. When you press again the accelerator, these cars they move. Those artificial intelligence. Even your phone. Even if you used to go to, to this particular side, when you open your phone, you will take you there before you even touch. Even in the department. Mr. Quayle and Chai, Mr. Quayle, they started this thing, and they stopped it. I don't know the reason why. Because certain buildings or certain floors, when there's no one in the building, the lights switches off automatically. By doing so, those lights, they are saving a lot of uh, deal. But when I, when I drive the cross of the provinces at night, you will see government departments, not necessarily public works, other government departments, even schools, their lights are still on. If that, as youth people, you can encourage, the department to implement the, 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 this uh, artificial intelligence. The, the, there can be job creation, and department and, and government will be saving a lot of money. Even the taps, guys, when you put a tap in airport, set your hands in, at the airport, the, the tap automatically switches off or switches on. In the department, there's, there's, there's few that is being done. There's a number of things colleagues that you can do when it comes to artificial intelligence as a department, but it's not a project. Make an air conditioning. You got to see your condition for the weekend, you know? How much, how much bill is that? Then, then you look at the ease of UU buildings. Eh? The, it's not yet this thing of the, the, the techno, in terms of techno perspective. Eh? Drone technology. Do you have drones here, Mr. K? Okay? We don't have drones. As young people, you can influence, eh? John, for John, John's situation, eh? you influence that department have drones. Then the department will, have, will, have, will be enforced to employ people who are going to be drones and uh, drivers. So that is job creation. Uh, these are drones. You sit here, you send a drone to, a, to somewhere, to that building. There's someone operating the drone, taking pictures, analyzing the data that comes from the drone. It's a skill, guys. The use of the 5, 5D building, information modeling. You know, guys. Is it implemented? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Chances for this. Uh, Mr. Kufa and the HOT, the, 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 they, they said I must attend the the the, the in, in the harbor for the for the for the, for the center of our of our engineering motor center. Guys, the cars are changing. By 2010, most of the cars will be using EP3. Already there's cars that are hybrid. Some of the cars are using EP3, some of the cars are using fuel. Already Toyota, Una I motor, that it cross. It's always the battery, it's seven sun eh? yes. and the fuel. You can drive about 200 kilometers without using the fuel. So it's the battery. It's switch off. There is a Mercedes Benz using C class. Um OVW is using a hybrid car, but it's all it's AFT South Africa, it's also. So which means that there's a lot of jobs that were created by 20 things in the center that are not there. It's careers for young people, the, the alpha generation. 
then this career's colleagues will not end. You like it or not. More especially this one, as, as women. There are few women who are doing this thing. Um, our, our, that, 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 in plumbing. In plumbing, it's disgusting. Every person needs the plumbing. Uh, even if it's like we need the plumbing. Um, I, I made this example again, I will make it. In 2003, I was doing on a Telemosh University. There was a doctor, Professor Andre Rue, if you Google Andre Rue, is the School of Business. He, he was there. Andre Rue, Professor Andre Rue, told us in class that year, 2003, that he was asked by a professor and a, and a wife, and a professor that was a doctor. And professor Andrew said to us, I told them that your child must not do anything that's related to your professorship or your, 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 your doctor. Mm. Your child must do the artisan. Because in 2010, South Africa will not have artisans. Mm. In 2003, seven years before, in 2010, when, during 2010, there, were, there was a shortage of, of artisans. Even now, we still have a shortage of, of artisans. If now in your house you have a challenge with, it, with, it, with, 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 with electricity, or maybe I'm a part of Kregan City, a Jujur in Dambo, or insurance, or if you have a pipe, you have insurance, what does insurance do? It sends a company to come and do a, a, a assessment, mostly. It's white, colored, and Indian companies. It's blue, it's, it's blue black companies. That are those guys, the artisans, those are not engineers. It's artisans guys who are doing the work. Mm -hmm. uh, plumbing, there are few. The only nasty job in plumbing is when this thing is broken here. <laughs> <Where she is. laughs> Otherwise, there's nothing. You can do plumbing, guys. <laughs> then, <coughs> there's, there's a lot of fun in, in this thing, colleagues. You, you can influence young people to do these, these things. Uh, maybe if you are lucky, you can have coach was you are younger than the age of 35 um, and join this thing. Colleagues, there's another career that as young people can look at. The ease of maritime study, of, of studies, maritime studies. There are few universities, UKZNs, UTs, UCT, DUT. If you look at the, the maritime studies, there are few students, there are less than 100 at, at a university that are doing maritime studies. Um, um, you can do the navigative duties, you can supervise cargo, you can do the maintenance of ships, you can travel with the ship. There's opportunities there. There's only one university in this province, it's, it's NMU, and there are few people who are doing that thing. It's very, it's very um, um, tense program. And even if you look at Eastern Cape, we do need such skills in the province because we've got the oceans that is more than 800 kilometers. And I was listening as well to SAFM other day. SAFM, there was a, a conference at, 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 at KZN. There's a letter from the um, DUT of KZN. That person was telling the, the broadcaster that day that the employers, they are, they, they are in need of CVs of the learners. Already in class, there's an employer who is interested in employing you. So, colleagues, it's a scar skill, you can do it. If you don't know what is about time, eh? it's, it's something like that. It's, it's something like that. You, you can either uh, you can either manage the ship when the ship is about 2,000 kilometers, it is a, a, a cargo. We are about manage traffic. You can either uh, you, you you supervise or you manage the issue of the of of, of loader a ship, and either you you manage these trucks who are coming to take this um, this cargo from the from. You can either do the, the navigation or check who the ship is. Accident or chase another one. You can check all these things. It's done by people. There are, there are people that can do these things. There are opportunities that are based on Transnet uh, and elsewhere colleagues. Colleagues, there is another one that we are not looking at as young people. This is of scholarships. Since the uh, colleagues, you are young at the age of 35, you never traveled elsewhere because of your, the way you are born. <laughs> <laughs> born through poverty as us. 
were all born through Bobat. We never crossed the borders of this country. But there are scholarships that can help you to leave the borders. As from Commonwealth, you apply, you go through Commonwealth uh, website, you look for scholarships, then there are those funds, they, they fund those, um, you can look at that, uh, there's, a, there's a website, click to the link, it takes straight to the website, you apply for scholarship, you admit it there, you go, you go across, they, they give you all those things. Then colleagues, then even if you, you don't want to go to Commonwealth website, maybe, you can go to the link, the one that you write there, that got international scholarships, dot dhet dot gov dot a, or the other education, or you go to Google, and go up at the bar, scholarship, dhet, oh, that is extremely good scholarship. This scholarship is by 15 December, that part is a scholarship. You, you get a chance, you can go to Swiss, uh, uh, Switzerland, you go to these countries, you encourage out the guys from outside. The new development programs that you can look at as this forum eh, is the ease of the native program. The native program, the life and personal skills development program. What is already all the speakers talking about the alcoholism, the pregnancy, and all these things. Maybe you can also develop the, 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 the young people about, not about um, um, the ease of the the, 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 the life skills and coaching. The leaderships are there. The student internships are there. Student chapters are there. The graduate internship program, schools programs, candidacy program, where skills development, leadership development program, mentoring, uh, as far as public works are called. I've, I've got that as better that comes. I've got the current interventions. I've got the impact in the conclusion. So, my colleagues, if you think this is a lie, look at the, the, the case of Dubai. Dubai in 1990, Dubai in 2003, there were a couple of buildings, like Eastern Cape. Dubai today, we've got a dream of going to Dubai, which means that if then we put our heads together as young people of this country, we can ensure that the, our country is like Dubai. Even if you look at today, the, the those that last visited Eastern Cape, but especially King Williamstown in 2003, 2021, and they will come in 2024. They will, they will get lost when entering King Williamstown. Both sides, either from East London or either from, 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 uh, from yeah. So, of, yeah, because that building, the, 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 the beautiful roads there, which means that those that left this country prior on 1994, they come back, they will get lost in Johannesburg because of the highways that we did. So which means that if you young people today, you can start building this South Africa that we need, the smart cities, everything, by 2040, you will see a better South Africa. Okay, I like this one, I don't know who wrote it. But if we cannot solve the problems with the same thinking we used when created them. So, colleagues, think out of the box. The challenge that I'm having today, resolving them, it needs, um, some, 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 somehow, you must have a thick skin, like a crocodile skin, so that those problems are resolved faster. Next from the deck, uh, this one I will skip. I will skip this one. Skip this one. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, colleagues, she will be program director, lo even to me, le. Utiman criticize lo email as goba she will be but I apologize, she had to leave. Um, and a few other members also had to leave because of um, logistics problems. Um, sorry, guys. Um, in a discussion, she suggested either we move a discussion or we cancel it. I don't know how the house feels. And then we go straight to e commissions. I do not know how, what we think or how the house feels about that. Go back to Shweli because saying half past three already, uh, saying half past four, I mean already.
Mr. Mzanand, Mtlambi, Unga, Perfum. However, the presenters or the people who are responsible for answering those questions can answer them tomorrow. We take them and then we keep them overnight and then they will be entertained tomorrow. So if there are questions, maybe we can take them now. Can I just need to get a pen um, and then, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Dingwa, you sound like a silly question. with the candidate program and the Basari holders program. The Basari program you can join up from graduation. The candidacy program you can join like myself being in Basari, but I joined, but it's a good one when we are at the office. So that's the first question. And then the second one, it's not a question, it's just a comment to Mr. Dingwayo. Um, you mentioned something about BSc, BNG, and National Diploma in that. Um, that opinion is not necessarily true, because uh, now I'm, I'm a victim for that one. Also based in Cape, Upaseka Shuno Level 7, and you tell your parents that you want to go to bed. Uvelaka Alumambana, Uyakubane Betasasu no Mtu Kukute Nazi, Nazi Usu, Nazi Nazi Mandela, what do you want a bet? So now I'm there for the blood trap, Yobana, I have to do national diploma even though I qualified a bet in the UCT. I think national sessions is injured, even the universities should be involved because and you born in the NMU, who are in Doni, who went to EPSC program for built environment. I've been a medical school, who's again. So it's not necessarily the fact that a matriculate assistant Cape did not qualify a party. I won't see my Leo Suimani, who pin up a bed, who pin up a cup. It's just a comment, thank you. Oh, sorry, I'm forgetting something. Oh. Um, Mr. Dima, I also mentioned Pabu SACPCMP by Tim Oliwe. I was attending an AGM by EXA last week. Now, Papa EXA, if you have a BTEC, if you have a BTEC in engineering, you can still register as a PRM, but the requirements are double. Isn't it ready now to put my application for a technologist? When I attended that AGM, I will make, oh, how you doing, sir? Ah, but so that when you put in your application, you can get it behind you straight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jojo. My question, madam, is a bit slower on the head on the mental end for for my sake. Um, um, we are noting um, presenters. We are noting the questions, right? Thank you. But I'm also noting the subject, by the way. Oh, Mr. Kufa said something very interesting, which is we are role models where we are, right? And oh, Mr. Mbenja had indicated that look, it's your responsibility to go out there and be the light within the point that you're in. Now, um, a, a question is in line with what oh, Mr. D has just said, which is, uh, we 
we as a department will not be will not be funding or rather giving bursaries to undergrads. Um, now, can the forum forum for me give clarity, a bit of clarity on on what sounds like a, a bit like a contradiction when earlier it was said that we ought to go to grassroots levels and share information with school kids and inform them that about bursaries and formal trainings when we turn and say NSFAS is there for the underground. For me, it sounds a bit like a, a contradiction. And question number two is, would be then, what is the correct channel of procedure to reach out to schools and do a roadshow, um, and I say this in inverted commas, um, a roadshow to inform our communities of these questions and opportunities? Um, because the last thing we want is to go out there and say things, uh, then the, the partner says, no, I you going to mind? Um, thank you, Chair. Um, my question will be directed to Mr. Um, Gwenja. Um, you spoke about the issue of the upcodes and the contractors sort of taking the upcodes to deploy them into the communities where they will be working, which is a great thing. Um, you also spoke about the PSPs having um, a clause now where um, upon employment they have to train and employ people from within the department, which is the graduates, um, which is also good. Um, mine is centered mostly around the employment or the deployment of the upwards there to as the contractors, um, of which uh, uh, I foresee a great risk, of which I'm sure it might have been identified, um, and also risk um, aggression strategies have also been identified with planning. Now, in most cases, the stakeholders that we deal with in terms of the Ababa local, they have high interest and they high power, so uh, they could potentially negatively in affect the e e e project land. Now, how do you manage the situation and all of the Because in some cases, we deal with these people and they are hard-headed. I'm sure uh, some of us here in the room have dealt with the communities um, where they threaten to even shut down the project because they just want things done the way they want them. Now, as I said, how best do you roll out information to the communities to emphasize the change, um, basically, to sort of incorporate the proper stakeholder engagement to Wales and Uba, we sort of don't find ourselves in a situation where um, the, the communities are sort of resisting the change that we are uh, said to be bringing because our numbers, they don't really care much about people who are trade tested buses are fuckable number because they are they have passed the trade test yeah. They have their or the ayas, abakoyo, apa eriel, who are bricklayers, who are painters, but they haven't gone through the process of actually attaining um, an accreditation. So my question is mostly centered around how then could we best factor in the change into the stakeholder engagement so that in future the projects that we don't encounter a situation where we get resistance to to the change that we are bringing as a department. Thank you. Another question. This should be solved from the last round. We really don't have time. I'll just remind you of the time. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Mr. Timwayo. Um, the first one is. He had mentioned in one of his slides about candidates that are um, OHS and environmental. So I just want to check, but now how is the department assisting um, OHS and environmental in getting themselves registered? Because I am aware that um, it can take engineers, QSs, and project managers are doing that, I think, through PMO. So um, I'd just like to understand that part. And also, looking at how um, Public Works is dealing with infrastructure, you'll find that we don't have internally a permanent professional um, health and safety 
uh, agent or manager or something like that. Um, so I just wanted to clarify on that as well. Thank you. I think CEO's final questions. Oh, just one more. Okay. This is regards to the entry level workers, so the level six that will comes into the department. It's it will go through the entire department as is. We enter into the workplace and we're given a seat and you've got to occupy the seat and do work. Obviously resources is another story, but I'm not going to dive into that right now. But going forward, there's no plan, there's no plan in training, in equipping the entry level workers, so for instance, let's say, the, the inspector. There's no plan in place to train them. So we're not giving the youth, because it's mostly the youth that will enter in those low level posts, we're not giving them anything like a baseline and this is the requirements, this is the day to day, this is the way to go forward, this is the way that we will actually like plan our day and then execute work. Because there needs to be an outcome. At the end of the day we have to work, not to just sit the office for. So I know I've seen it and we've all seen it where we have positions filled but people aren't being trained. We we just expect it to grasp and know. But we are entry level employees, for instance. Now we pick up as we go, which is fine. But then in doing that, there is no standard. So it's difficult for the youth just to pick it up. Then everyone has different standards. So now our inspector will be obviously inferior. Then our professional services will be inferior because no one has, obviously the, the outcome is the same, the product is the same. But we need to standardize things. So that obviously goes as far as to say, we need to standardize things from, from the beginning and going up. Obviously there is a different method in everything, but from personal experience, I, I know in the department we need to enable us, besides resources, we actually need people to take the leadership. Obviously, this is why we are. We are the succession plan. We are to cause the chaos, to, to cause progress. But doing that, we, we need to standardize and maybe as the department raise the question, how are we going to go about creating this progress? Thank you. That's the last of the questions. Um, then we'll give over to Mr. Zamanda to outline the procurement commissions and what is expected from us when we are doing that. I think that is the end of my reign. Thank you so much. Uh, colleagues, um, as as Uma Mutaluza has, has said, uh, as questions that is open, long home, so okay, so they will be incorporated. A uh, glad discussion is a work on after when during the time of report back from plenary, we have noted them these questions. Now it's time for uh, for us to break away. Since you will be already, there are two breakaway sessions, colleagues. There will be two of them. The first one, um, the first breakaway sessions will be dealing with those bonds, discussion points. Um, that group will be mapping the ma uh, mapping members of the youth forum in the department. The, the scribe, the, the facilitator for that, will be myself. 
So when we, we are going to be, up to be gathering in this room, that's the first one. These are the questions come to us no Chinese public. And then the next. Then, then the second group will be dealing with these questions, colleagues, um, in the breakaway sessions. That group will be next door. And unfortunately, there are no chairs, so you have to take your chairs along with you up here next door. That group will be facilitated by Mr. Nguencha. Um Those are the terms of reference that you'll be dealing with in that group. Uh, I'm sure the facilitator will explain to you when you get there. So those are the two. Um, I'm not sure about the duration of, of, of these breakaway sessions for now, for today. But I'm of the view that you can continue until you exhaust yourselves. Probably, how can you say it? And the other side, how can you take it? Come again. Yes, I'm told that uh, uh, up until 6 o'clock at, at, at least. Speaking up until six o'clock, then you will see from there. But see, Tinina. Um, yeah, that's it, colleagues. Goes. Oh yes, yes. Uh, thank, thanks, Mr. Kufa. Um, now I was going to. Mr. Kufa is asking how are we going to be dividing ourselves with groups. I want to avoid a situation where people from one region flock on one group, on one commission. We must avoid that. I, I'm not coming up with the, with the mechanism, how should we do it? But I'm saying we must not flock into one group as people from, from the same region. That's what I'm, that's what I'm suggesting. Um, Mr. Mkwensha, what do you suggest? How, how do you think we should divide ourselves? So you mean Chapersons must deal with it? Ne? So Chapersons must assist us. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Even if you are five, the, the, the three should be on the other group. The three should be on one group. The other, the, let's, 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 let's make sure we do that. Because yeah, one, two, one, two, one, 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 so Chairperson's must assist us, assist in our colleagues. I hope Ms. Kupel is a, is a, is a commission, isn't it? Yeah. Who group? Who group one? Yeah, now we need advantage because he says it's corner, says it's love. Is it says it's love as one. Now I wonder if Ms. Kupel. Quickly, Chairperson's move, divide another one, but we need groups. That's what we're that's what we're saying. Let alone be move us slowly. That's what we're saying, but but they aren't moving. <laughs> 